I'm gonna give you a few reasons why it's actually helpful to lift your gaze up, even if the monitor's not there. And you know what? Sometimes it's nice to not have to stare at the monitor the whole time. Where you look when you row matters. I'm Cassie Neiman, a You Can Row To Master Rowing Instructor, and here's your trainer tip of the day. So when we're rowing, where our eyeballs are, where our gaze is, actually makes a difference in our stroke. So depending on what kind of machine you're using, you may always be looking in one direction or another. I'm on a Concept2 machine and this monitor is actually designed to stop at this height. It cannot go any lower. Some of the older models of Concept2 actually do go lower, so keep that in mind. But the newer ones, they have a stopping point and that is for a reason. That's because we want our eye gaze to be up. And I'm gonna go over that. But there are tons of other machines out there. And some of them have those monitors lower down, perhaps where the handle is going, feeding into the machine. And so you may find yourself having to look down a lot of the times to see what's on the monitor. That makes sense. But I'm gonna give you a few reasons why it's actually helpful to lift your gaze up, even if the monitor's not there. And you know what, sometimes it's nice to not have to stare at the monitor the whole time. So let's talk about the stroke here. When we're rowing, we want that chain to feed into the machine in as straight of a line as possible. Because what we're trying to do is move from point A to point B as effectively as possible. We don't want the handle or the chain going up or down. That just creates some deviation in that straight line and makes you do more work. So as you're rowing, we want it to feed in in a straight line. There are a few things that help us with that. One is keeping our hands on that even level, right? Not letting our hands run down along our legs or coming way up in the drive. Either direction, not the best plan, okay? Another thing that helps with that is our chest keeping our chest up so when we get to the catch, we can push through our legs and keep everything basically from the hips to the shoulders, which then travels down the arms, engaged so we can really transfer that force from our legs into the machine. So basically, hands on an even level, chest up, shoulders down. All of this is helped and aided by an eye gaze that is up higher. If we look down, we have a tendency to send our hands down. And when our hands go down, so does our chest. It's just a matter of what you're looking at and your body follows, okay? So if we keep our eyeballs up and our hands up, our chest stays up, and we're in a much better position at the catch versus coming down to here and then coming back up. Because what happens when we go down, right? If I am to drop my hands, more than likely my chest is gonna go too. And then what goes down must come up. More than likely when you drop those hands down into the catch, we then pick the hands up, we start to open up the body. And then as we drive back, we've kind of missed out on all the leg drive and we start to use our upper body, right? It starts to kind of look like this. And what's happening is I'm looking down, and then I'm looking up, I'm looking down, and then I'm looking up. And I don't have a specific spot for my eyes, which is why I like to cue people to look right there at that monitor. On the Concept2, makes it really easy because you can just look at that data the whole time. And if you keep your eyes right there, your hands and your chest tend to stay in the right position. Not always the case, but a much better chance for it to happen. Now, if your monitor is down here, you are going to have to look down there sometimes. But what I would encourage you to do, right? Not only maybe pick your gaze up from that monitor every once in a while, but also if you look down, don't let the hands in the chest go with it. Think to yourself, still look up and you're gonna start looking down, right? without letting your whole body collapse forward. So while your eye gaze might not solve all the problems in the rowing stroke, they may help 
and get you going in the right direction. So pick a point to keep your eyeballs on and focus on that the entire stroke, making everything as even as possible in and out of that catch so that you're not dipping the hands and then following it with an opening of the body. Try that out. Let me know how it goes.